Hey everybody, my name is Mark Alexander and welcome back to Saber Outdoors. So uh, today we are going to do part three of the thrift store camping challenge. So guys, the video is doing really good as, as of filming. I've got over 140 views. I'm hopeful that that's going to keep blowing up because I'm super excited about that. So I've still got my pack here, still has everything in it. But I bought a few more things from the store. So I bought a saw. You can see right there, 10 bucks for the saw. And uh, there's a button on it right there to lock it. You push the button and it opens up to be a little saw. This is plenty enough for the amount of fire that I intend to have. And uh, this will solve the problem of me having to swing that uh, machete, or I keep calling it machete, it's a parang, but I keep having to keep having to swing the parang until my shoulder just shot. But uh, also, uh, oh, my little side sleeper heart is so happy because I have a big pillow. I have a big pillow and I've lost, oh, there it is. Right there is the price, if I can get it in the frame. It may be a little bit mangled because I just hugged it. $10 for a big pillow. <laughs> and I almost ripped my hat off. And uh, I told you all that uh, I would go and get another one of these bags. I did, here it is. The other one's in the bottom of this bag. But uh, we're going to go out again. <laughs> we're probably going to actually go to a campsite, like a camping place, because uh, I'd rather not, not have the druggies come back, because uh, that was not a good experience. Um, if you're wondering what I mean, go back to part two, or even part one, to see everything that's inside of here. And uh, I can show you everything during those videos show you what's happened during the last videos, but for this video today, I think I'm done explaining. I've only got these three items additional. We're gonna see if maybe we can get around to using our throwing hatchets to uh, throw at things and uh, just generally go and try and have a good time because today's been kind of a aggravating rough day. So I decided I'm gonna go relax out in the wilderness. And I'm going to bring you with me. All right, guys. So we have made it to the woods. We're currently walking around seeing if we can find us a decent spot to camp. Um, you know, we want something that's reasonably flat. Reasonably brush-free so I don't have to clean and clear and fight and beat and thrash. Let's look right over here right quick. Okay, okay, I, I can make this work. It's flat, I don't see no stumps. There's some brush to clear. I'll give y'all a look. So uh, I'm gonna set you all on the tripod and uh, we'll see about uh, getting this cleaned up and getting our shelter built. All right guys, so this is gonna be okay for us, but there's, uh, there's a lot of brush and bracken in the ground and there's a lot of uh, just dead stuff laying around. So we're gonna get that cleaned up. And uh, there's a couple of tr small trees I'm gonna cut down. And uh, I'm gonna use my nice saw for that purpose. And this actually looks like it would make for enough firewood and it's all dead. Uh, okay, yeah, I can just rip that down. And there's another big dead sanding tree next to it. Now I'm going to cut that one and there's one, I'm not sure if it's in camera or not. I think it is. Let me come up and look real quick. Yes, it is in ca camera just barely. So that little tree right there. We're going to cut them down because they're in our way. And uh, I'm going to drag that out of my bag. We'll be right with you. Now, when you're cutting these, don't cut them up here. 
because up here you still have a post to deal with. Cut them as low as you can stand it. I'm going to cut plenty low. I'm going to kneel down away from you. Hopefully I won't give you a better show than, you're, than you paid for today. You cut this just as low as you can. Come on, give it to me. guys as they say eventually find the weight won't go again burn all right guys so i've got a nice big clean area if you can see it and the way i've been doing this i've lost my stick i had a there it is so cl close it could have bit me get so far away but I took the stick and just raked it back all the leaf litter so I've got me a nice big area of reasonably bare ground now I'm gonna string my tarp and uh, and then I'm going to uh, get you down down with me and uh, I think I'm just gonna spring my tarp for right now, but I'm gonna show you that, so don't run, run off. So we're gonna take our, our rope and we're gonna tie it to one end about shoulder tall, maybe a little taller. But today we'll put it, we'll put it uh, about eye level just for the ease of doing it. And, uh, you know, I'm not a professional knight, not, not, but duh, I'm not a professional knot tire. So, that's a knot that's working for me. I don't need it to do anything, but just that. And then I'm gonna come over here and We'll move this and I'm gonna tie what's known as a trucker's hitch so we twist our line grab the end and bring it through now we go go around the tree at this point and instead of tying to our main line we tie to our trucker's hitch and it acts like a ratchet strap. Now we gotta get it the same height. It's about eye level. And uh, we take, put her through, and then we work it in. And then whenever we get it tight enough to suit us, I just put me an overhand, you know, tie with a loop right there. And that's very tight. Now, for those who didn't see what I did last time, so we got these short loops, and how we do these, we put them over the line, and just like my finger would be the line, we put that through, and then we come around and do that same deal again so we've put it through twice so doing this correctly it's once and then through again and you tighten that up all the way now with no tension on it it moves but with tension on it it doesn't want to move and i'm i'd usually you know, it takes a minute to tighten them down all the way when you got the knot where I do. But you can see, it's holding pressure. And that's how we're gonna set our tarp up. 
All right, guys, so we are setting up our tarp now. I've got one of our tarps out, and we're going to take our little loop, put through there, and I used our parang to cut me a stick, just a regular old stick, and I'm going to put that through this loop. So now the tarp stays. I'm going to move that tarp plenty far over, but over here we're going to do the same thing that we showed you over there we're going to take our take our cordage our little loops we're going to put them through and then put them through again i believe this is called the monkey fist but i don't know because i am functional not professional so there's our loop again and we're going to take our loop put it through this hole and then take our stick as soon as i Remember not to drop the tarp, but we're gonna take our stick and put through the hole. And now we can tighten this up real tight because these are under pressure so they don't move. So my tarp is tight now. All right guys, so we have made it to where I'm gonna put this tarp down. So first you're gonna drop your phone because you didn't have it where you're supposed to. I hope I wasn't mooning you just now. So, first, we got our tarp ready. Put the back of your tarp, take your big spike through the hole. It's real hard. Then, through this one, and tighten the back up. The back is really tight now, and we're gonna go to the other corner. We're gonna come to this other corner after we move our bag. Chunk, harangue. And we're gonna take our other, our other tent stakes. I'm gonna use three out back, because I'm not gonna use them for, uh, I'm not gonna use four for the fire like I did last time. Good deal. Now we're gonna go up front. We're gonna stop down those two. Can't be set up. If you needed to pull them up fast, you would take these same loops and you would use them so that you could get some leverage on it. And you could also do like we did here, stick a stick through it so you have something to use as a handle. It makes life so much easier. But uh, let's let's look on the front front side and see what it looks like. We just pull her stub up, put her right back down, and there. That's our campsite set up. I've got I've got all the room that I had for the other one. Plus, if you look, I've got a little area up front for fire, for stuff. All right, guys, I got uh, sidetracked. I've got a tree in the way. I want to uh, use those throwing hatchets later. So you all saw me earlier use that little saw. It's little, it's like, that's the comparison because that's what I used for the, for the other. Now I have sharpened this a little, but not a lot, but this is a reasonably average size for what I, cut down down earlier like this is right around the same size is what i'm trying to get through and doing a very poor job of it but i'm gonna see how many wax it takes to get through this and how i feel when i'm done so let me make sure i've got a big big stump right there so i'm gonna get right here where i don't have stuff in my way and i'm gonna see how long it takes me to get this down
I'm sure there's a proper term for this. I call it beavering. And this is the problem with beavering. Sometimes the beaver doesn't put it right where he thinks he should. But this method is perfectly safe on small trees. Ah, that's why. It's grown around the tree next to me. But, and I'm still not done yet. Finally, got it done. And now I've got this big stump that unless I get down on my knees and chop just like that, it takes me that much longer. So guys, I'm a saw man. Now, I could probably do that once or twice more, but I don't wanna. I like a saw so much better. But uh, I'm gonna go set up my sleep stuff all right guys so i've got my sleeping pad blowed up i have my pan hung up on one side i've got my saw kind of stuck in the uh, toggle on that side because it's super tight i'm able to get away with doing that now i've got two more things in this bag if i can get them out oh uh, uh, good deal <sighs> my double sleeping bag so, I've got this bag. It couldn't fit back in, the, uh, back in the bag it came from, of course. So, I took a couple of these belts. You see them at Goodwills everywhere across America. I took two of them. And you can adjust them however you need for whatever size thing you're packing. I usually put my uh, tarps. I wrap them in these. But uh, I didn't have a thing that fit this because now it's twice as big. And I'll undo my things because it doesn't take no time. It's just the same as taking your belt off of your waist. But you undo do your little belts from here. And just look at this. So this, this is how big it is normally. Plenty long but not wide enough. Now when you zip two of them together, I can't get around this to see you. It's so huge. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And you can do this with practically any two same sleeping bags. Like these are same brand, same kind. kind. I knew I could do it. I thought I could put one side colored a different color than the other, but I couldn't, that's okay. This will work great. And all we do is throw that down on this big blue sleeping pad. And then tonight when the time comes, I have, guys, I have a wealth of room in that thing. So uh, I think next on the agenda, we're gonna throw some hatchets. All right, guys, I gotta have you set back in the corner I'm going to do some shots from here, and then I'm going to get the camera close up so that you can see the destruction. But uh, I've, got my, I've got my twin hatchets right here, and uh, we'll pull them out, out of the thing. I did not sharpen these, so they may stick, they may not. But we've got a tree, oh, it might be... 15 20 feet away at the most uh you know guys i'm not an artist at this i'm just here having fun that's kind of what this whole is this whole camping thing's about because if you're not camping for fun you're homeless don't be homeless miss nailed it let me bring you along just let you see Nailed it. Guys, we're trying. If I don't have to walk as far, is that counted as a win? Hey! 
Hey, finally got it there. Guys, it's only just barely there. But barely winning is still winning. All right, guys. So, uh, we're back. We've, uh, we've got a fire started. I didn't show you that process because you could have seen that in part two. And if you've not seen it, why you haven't. So, now we're going to cook us. I don't really like to eat a ton before bed. And it's not long before, till bed. A couple of hours I'll probably be asleep. But we're going to make marshmallows. Now, I like this style of marshmallow. They're the actual s'mores marshmallows. They cook up really good. Now, we got to talk about marshmallows. Guys, some of y'all, I love you. You my people. And I don't want to lose your friendship over this. But we, we got to have us a serious talk here. If your marshmallow looks like the bottom of this shoe, black as night, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. That is what is known in the cooking world as burnt. Burnt is what that is. That is not cooked. That is burnt. And if you say anything else, you better say it in them comments. And I will fight you. I will fight you, you for sure. Because it's burnt. It's not cooked. If this beautiful white marshmallow becomes black as night, that's not cooked. That's burnt. Okay. Read it over with. Maybe. I might go back on it in a minute. Don't you, don't you threaten me. Don't you tell me how to live. So, we've got our little fire going here. And uh, I've got me a roasting stick, which uh, I took my, took my little hatchet, actually, and I shaved the bark off of it. Now, when you're doing this, you want to use green wood. You do not want to use, use dead wood. You should be burning dead wood but you want green wood to roast with because if you use dead wood it burns like that we don't want burnt stuff on this that means it's going to be black like the bottom of my shoe that's wrong it's wrong so we're gonna stab our marshmallow smack this little mosquito and i'm going to show you the proper technique so if you're just shoving it down in the fire and letting it burn, wrong. Very wrong. Not, no, don't, don't do it. Do not do it. Don't you, don't you let me catch you doing it. I will call you out on it. I will say that that's the wrong thing to be doing. I really am trying to show restraint, but I really, really hate burnt food. So what you want to do, you either hold it above the flames or just let them lick that stuff you just set it right over there and you back and forth that thing and it's going to end up being so gold and brown we like gold and brown on this channel that's the way i made them catfish for them kids let me tell you this right here it's gonna be oh yeah <laughs> i can tell, tell you something right now it's not gonna be bad let me bring it close to you where you can see look at that brown brown is what we want and we want that all over so i'm gonna keep on working it's starting to get a little bit jiggly jiggly's good jiggly he makes me happy oh it's actually starting to melt off my stick time to eat look at that beautiful golden brown comes straight off because it's molten That's how it's done. Anyone tells you differently, they lied. You don't black the end of a good marshmallow stick till you're done with it and then you're ready to throw it away. Now guys, my fires went down some, so I'm gonna build it back up. I'm gonna make me a lot more marshmallows because I'm making them the proper way, which is that gelatinous goodness. Just nice light brown on the outside. 
I tell you, it ma makes fat man want to run. All right, guys. So I came out to the edge of the woods because you can see back there it is quickly getting dark. It gets dark about an hour earlier in the woods than it does out here at the edge of the woods. Because you can see I've, I've got like an angelic glow because I'm so lit up. But uh, if we were to walk back in those woods, it would look like it's right on the edge of dark. But I've got the food put away because, again, we're in bear country. We don't play with that. I also don't want to be visited by possums, raccoons, you know. Generally speaking, I don't want to be visited by anything that has teeth and claws enough to hurt me. But, uh, guys, I am going to go back get settled in i found me a big uh big piece of log that i put on the fire so that should hold me until tomorrow and uh guys i probably won't pick the camera back up until tomorrow um i guess i'll see you tomorrow morning with any luck good morning everybody it is a beautiful day and we are here in our little campsite so uh it looks like my fire's out so first thing i'm gonna do glasses then fix that stay with me all right guys so uh i have got our fire going and uh there it is so i am about to attempt to start a very particular thing that i've never tried before never played with before but you know when's that stopped me before so, uh, I am going to use this right here. <clears throat> now, what is this right here? This right here is a rocket stove. Now, you might say, what is rocket stove? Well, you see that hole in the top? It connects to that hole in the side. And, uh them four nails on top act like the four nails did in part two when I was cooking over a fire this is I call it a single log fire but uh, <clears throat> basically the air is gonna go like say we're this is our log you know hole in the top hole in the side the air goes in the hole in the side fire goes out the top and instead of having to add wood over and over again like i'm currently having to do with this little fire in the in the rocket stove it burns itself and eventually it just bur burns all by itself i don't have to add more fire to it and it lasts for a good long while long enough that we will be able to get breakfast out of it but uh for breakfast this morning I have uh, dehydrated hash browns and uh, you have to warm the water up so I've got my bottle of water here I'm gonna stick it kind of near the fire it only has to be like 135 which is uh, about what the hot water at your house probably is it, it roundabout if uh if your water is too hot to touch then it's above that but if it's uh if it's like i need a little bit of cold water when i take a shower that's about where 135 ish is um but we're gonna put our water eh, probably we're gonna put our wa water right there just let it sit there and hang out for couple minutes keep an eye on it of course because we don't want to burn through the bottle now as far as last night went so the king camp mattress pad love it loved everything about it my big my big uh, uh my brain just quit on me sleeping bag that's what it is um sleeping bag great um big enough for me i was able to move around in it without like feeling like a little cooked sausage um 
Now there was uh, there was one problem throughout the night that uh, caused me not to sleep all that well, and that's bugs. There was a lot of bugs, and uh, that's just a consequence of the time of year that it is. Um, the bugs, they would, of course, if I had my cell phone at, out, they would swarm that thing, which is crazy because I thought this little smudge fire would be able to keep them away, but that didn't happen. So I didn't sleep terribly well, but uh, I would have done better if I had a regular tent. But you know, this is a thrift store challenge. So all we had was what thrift store had. Thrift store had this stuff. But uh, eventually, I figured out that I could scooch down in the bag really good and tight, and I could throw the hood over me and have just enough of a hole to breathe out of. And I had one of those uh, those neck gaiters, the ones that you wear over and you wear around your ne neck in order to, you know, keep your neck from getting sunburnt and such. Um, I pulled that up over my mouth and nose. That way I could, uh, I could be safe from uh, having, you know, like an ant or a spider or something like that crawl into my mouth or up my nose and I pulled it over my ears as well because uh, yeah none of that just none of that but uh, we're gonna work on getting our rocket stove started I'm gonna take some coals from this fire and dump down that hole and see if I can get it started my logs a little just a little green so it might be a little hard to get going but we shall adapt, overcome, persevere, all those things. Thought you might be interested in how I'm getting this started. So I actually took some coals from my fire and I'm not, now I am just blowing on them coals. You can see I've already got smoke coming out the top. Now I'm going to find me some twigs and shove down in there and see if I can get this actually going. Alright guys, so we've got our hash browns. Our bottle is reasonably warm. Um, I'm sure that I can get away with this not being as hot as it says. Because it's re... You know, I'm not... I'm not cooking these with this water. So I think I can get away with this. We'll find out shortly. In we go. Like always, whatever we bring in, we take out. All right, guys, so update. Um, my rocket stove will not self-start. Um, I've put a number of six and twigs down it and you saw I could get fire going through it But uh, it's just too green guys. Yeah, and that's you know It, it happens. I, I knew it was a little green. I thought it might be too green, but uh, It's too green. So instead of uh, whining and moping and saying well, I guess I'm not having breakfast today um, We're gonna actually just Put this directly onto the coals. So uh, let me get you fixed up here. So we're going from right here to right there. And we're going to abandon this for today. Another day, we will do that. But uh, I'm going to get my fire kind of going a little bit more. And uh, I guess that's going to end up being just a holding table for me. All right, guys, we are back. There is our box of uh, hash browns. Um, this box is said to feed seven, but beings, it's my only thing I'm eating this morning, along with some cheese. I think I will probably have more than I can eat. 
yeah, that pan's not quite ready yet. But it's getting there. So the only special thing I brought was some Lowry's. Lowry season salt. It's the best season salt that I've ever found. I love it. And uh, I know there's at least one of my subscribers who loves it way more than I do because I bought him a big thing of it. And uh, he, he's really put a big dent into it. This lasts me for a good long while. Um, for him, I don't think it would last him more than a month. But uh, <clears throat> we're going to continue to wait for our pan to heat up. All right, guys. So I put me a little test pinch on there. It eats a season on away. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to consider that ready to go. I'm going to put more of my oil in. I kind of wish I had something a little bit better than this. I wish I had like a full bottle of this stuff. <laughs> it works. Um, but uh, but we're going to pour our stuff on top and uh, see how we do. That'll be more than enough for a first cooking. Like last time, I brought a flipper from home. If you call it a spatula, you're wrong. See, this is where I would like to have my nails because <clears throat> I could hold that fire up off of, I could hold my pan up off the fire and it would run infinitely better. Uh, but you know, we gotta work with what we got. And now it's time for that cheese. Now it was cool last night, but not as cool as I'd have liked it. I'd have liked it in the lower 50s, not the upper 50s. But, you know, it, it's life, you know. You don't always get what you want. <laughs> you get what's available. And then we'll put that last slice right there smack in the middle. And we're going to give that a few minutes to melt. When it's done melting, we're going to get this whole best put onto a plate and eat it. All right, guys. We're going to see if we can get this off the pan without uh, dumping it onto the ground. I still have half a box, but that would really, <laughs> that would really make me downhearted to lose my breakfast in such a way. So we're going to put our plate right here. We're going to take our makeshift handle pick up our thing make sure she'll slide a little and slide her off just like that let me give you a good close-up look see beautiful if you uh, if you had smell of vision you'd be uh, quite happy right now most people are like oh if you had smell of vision you'd be puking your guts out nope nope not on this channel. This channel, you'd be very happy. So uh, let's let's crib us out just a little bit on this corner because these are probably plenty hot still. Oh, but they're they're good. I'm gonna eat my breakfast, and I will probably see you when I am packing up camp. All right, guys. So part three is done and guys i probably will not be using most of this equipment again the the tarps are getting worn out the parang uh you know already expressed you know shoulder issues everything worked uh i was still very impressed with the sleeping pad very impressed with the sleeping bags if it weren't for the bugs constantly like barraging me um i think i would have slept super on a all that guys this adventure's over i probably won't be doing it with this equipment again so all there is to say is the usual youtube things like share subscribe comment ring that bell notification please please subscribe i've seen the analytics the analytics say that most of you are not subscribed it helps me so much and it costs you nothing nothing but uh with that said we'll see you somewhere in the woods or on the water